Come on now, we done, we done had it, my man. Oh. We done had it, my man. Oh. It's official. Oh, no. That's that shit. Look, he don't even sit the same no more. He's sitting there. Shut up. All right. Yeah. Hold on. Other way, y'all. Survive. Yeah. Yep. It's appropriate. It's a different feeling. It is. And he, look, between the two hats, he sat different between both of them. It just really ain't nothing you can tell me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're gonna have to host, man. I'm just. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. It's a vibe. Hey man, welcome back to the black market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of things I love, and Atlanta is one of them. Mm. And then when I saw this, it says, Atlanta deserves a leader who cares for all of its citizens. Mm. And then I saw the hat. And then I said, you know what? I believe him. <laughs> we gotta have him on the show. Cause if anybody's gonna run for any type of office with this kind of hat on, they gotta be good people, man. Come on now. <laughs> Do the honors. Listen, thank you for having me, brother. Thank you for having me. My name is my name is Alfred Chevy Brooks, man. I'm a, a school teacher by day, uh, former Freestyle Friday Hall of Famer for 106 in part. <laughs> Looking to make sure that we bring hip hop culture, that we bring the voice of young people to city council. It's time for Atlanta to have represent representation that is reflective of the young people that make Atlanta what it is. Um, <laughs> Are you ready to be that for us? Absolutely. Look, I went to school, I graduated from the Andrew Young School of Public Policy at Georgia State, which by the way is ranked over Harvard, graduated top 10% of my class, worked as a legislative aide, worked for Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities, on top of being a hip hop head, on top of being a father, a homeowner, a business owner, an influencer in the education space. Now, it's time for us to have influence on policy because we did a lot of marching for the last year, fighting for social justice, we did a lot of march and talking about needing police reform and these type of things, but the people who are in office don't have the political will to do the right thing. So now it's our time. Now it's our time. It is our time. And what is it going to take for it to be our time? Listen, we got 36,000 young people that are registered to vote. But the problem is, is that young people don't get engaged. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that run for, people who run for office they don't look like us, they don't sound like us, they don't talk like us, and they don't talk for us. So we get disengaged. So people like yourself, having platforms like you have, giving us the space to share and tap in with young people, this is how we get them inspired, this is how we get them activated. We go out and we vote for presidential elections, but when it's the local election, and I'm talking about this is stuff we feel, right? Mm -hmm. So like in Atlanta, for example. Marijuana is decriminalized. Mm -hmm. But the person I'm running against believes that marijuana is the reason that the rest of America thinks we soft on crime, and it's the reason why crime goes up. Mm -mm. But ever since they decriminalized marijuana, it's been hard to find good weed. <laughs> they, they might, them white people might know exactly what they talking about, man. Since, hey. since they decriminalized it, like all the drug dealers moved to something. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for us, honestly, man, it's time for us to legalize it throughout the state, though. 
Yeah. It's time for us. Yeah, for sure. See, that's the type of shit that you talk that gets you elected, man. So what's the process into getting you into the Atlanta City Council? What we need to do as well, a community? As a community, this is the real, right? These elections are not free. They're not free. It takes a lot of money to be able to send out mail or send out those text messages that get on your nerves, right? They get you get up, though. Right? So we need to be able to get some funding behind this campaign. We need the influencers of Atlanta to not be on the sidelines and be complaining about stuff, but actually activate to push what we're trying to do. Right. We need them really to get behind this, this campaign and help this thing go off, off the way we need it to. Right now, though, I got like six people in my race, but I'm ranked one or two throughout the entire city. Like, right. we definitely are resonating with the people, and ain't nobody working harder than me. Well, we're going to get this shit out immediately, Let's though. Let's go. This one of those ones where we have to handle with a sense of urgency because you seem to be sincere and, and have the people's needs at heart. And we're going to need some more of these hats. Yes. I think if it was more of these hats available to the young men in the city <laughs> of Atlanta, it'd be a lot more cool shit going on. Imagine that. Imagine that. And those hats came from a black hat maker right here in the city. Shout out to Fruition Hat Company and my brother Stan Zell and them. Yeah. And then some people gonna watch this and be like, why does everything have to be black? Because we don't have enough shit. Mm. We need to know where our people are and what they're doing and how we can help them. Yep. And that's exactly why we created this platform. If there's anything I could do to help my man get elected to the Atlanta City Council, and I know he gonna be in there representing my interest with this kind of shit on, I want him in there. Is, Bro, that, this, is that an official endorsement right there? Hell yeah. <laughs> Nigga, this hat, I would love to see you down there. I want you to be on the state legislature. Some I'm shit. Be, I'm gonna be, you know what? Just we gotta get you. you in the door, man. Yes. We'll yes. start at city council. That's how it starts. Then we're taking over state. Then we're going with some, you know, we're going to all the way up to the Supreme Court <laughs> with these hats on. We'll claim it. A million deep. Yeah. With Steve Harvey suits. <laughs> the new ones, the new ones, not the old ones. Not the baggy ones. No, nah, these, not the, the new ones, the, not the new ones, the new ones, man. <laughs> How long you been out campaigning? Uh, man, listen, we have, to be honest with you, I've been doing the work before running for office. Okay. Right? Uh, after the killing of George Floyd. All right. Right? Ten days later, one o'clock in the morning, I get the phone call that someone had gotten shot in the drive through at the Wendy's. Yep. And that folks were going berserk right. about what was going on. They were. They were, rightfully so. But the reason why I was called is because they know that people in the community trust me. They know that people in the community will listen when I try to bring some calm and make some common sense about it. But I've been fighting to get real police reform in Atlanta for over the past year. I started marching in Atlanta in 1991 with my dad at the Rodney King. Yeah. So I've always been about doing this work. We started running like hard on this campaign, announced this campaign in March of this year. Um, shout out to my sister Mina. We've been outside every single day with volunteers throughout the city, knocking doors, meeting voters, you know, being at every rally that we could. Early this morning, I was out uh, fighting uh, to keep the encampment that our homeless neighbors had outside by the church over by the Capitol as the Atlanta Police Department gets ordered to come out and pull up their tents and their property and throw it all away. So before I came to you to come do this, I'm outside fighting for the most vulnerable people in our community. And that's what I'm going to do, whether I'm elected, God forbid, if I am not successful in this campaign. Right. I'm always going to be doing this work because, yo, that's, this, it's the most Christ-like thing I could do. Right. Hey, I'm Carlos Miller. Are you having trouble getting out of debt? Well, our sponsor, PDS Debt, can help. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances aren't going down, this program is for you. PDS Debt has customized 0% interest options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal or student loans, medical bills, collections, or any type of debt. Must have over $5,000 in eligible debt to qualify. PDS Debt is so confident that they can save you money, they're giving our listeners with eligible accounts $25 Visa cards. That's right. PDS is offering $25 Visa gift cards to listeners with eligible accounts.
just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com forward slash black. That's pdsdebt.com forward slash B-L-A-C-K. What's the website that they can reach out? And My website is Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S, 4 F-O-R, A-T-L.com, Brooks, 4 A-T-L.com. We need people to volunteer to help us make phone calls, volunteer to knock doors. We need people to donate $10, $20. The most you can do is $2,800. Max out. Help us out, because if we do that, I promise you I'm going to do my part, and we're going to make sure that our voices are heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, there you have it. J-O-N, play some, man. Oh. This is the campaign. <laughs> City Council, man. Let's go, man. Bro, you think you can really be down there? Like, with, you think that's gonna be a problem? There's a lot of old people down there. Uh, you know, the tide is changing, bro. We got yeah. six seats that are going, is going to have new people in city council. And I'm not the only young, forward-thinking person running for office right now. Like, right. we, it's a family of us who've been on the front lines together that are all like, all right, boom, you run shout that seat. Shout out. Who are you talking you run about? Seat. Look, shout out my brother, Devin Barrington Ward. Okay, bet. Shout out, uh... <laughs> shout out uh, Liliana and Katie Kissel running okay. down the fire, right? Shout out uh, Rogelio and Larry Carter. All right, man. Rogelio. Rogelio. That's a cold name. Yeah. I know he got a hat like this. <laughs> <laughs> Rogelio. Rogelio. Right? You know, like, there, there are young people throughout the city who are running for office, and I think now it's just, it's that time. You know, it's more millennials and Gen Z than there are any other age group in America. It's more of us. Right. And so, you know, the thing is, is that our average politician is like 65. That's the problem. That's the problem. Old ass white folks. <laughs> well, they ruin everything, bro. Yeah, and it's people, but in a city like Atlanta, it's people who look like us that create policies and laws that are the most harmful to us. That's because they, be, they only got half of the information. They don't be out here like that. It's true. They out of touch. You got to really be among people, and we do too much about people without people. Right. I want you to get elected. And don't forget about traffic when you get elected. Traffic needs to be addressed. <laughs> Traffic in the city of yeah. the, right, job, people need to go to work at like 10 o'clock in the morning because yeah. we got to like change the schedule the, the, the or something. The problem, man, we got so many different issues why that's the case though, but a lot of it has to do with like our public transportation system is more inconvenient than it is like helpful. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like. And the potholes too. A lot of traffic results of people trying to swerve potholes. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. But imagine, though, like, honestly, like, if people could do their work on the way to work, taking public transportation or something. I'm just saying, you know, man. It's time to update it. But, yeah, the potholes, the roads are raggedy. Yeah. I live the in South East Atlanta. You go up Boulevard, it's like riding on gravel, bro. It's trash. No. It's, it's trash. I seen, I seen a, a dude take his rims off, just said, fuck it. <laughs> yes. Put some big ass. Cool, I know you done bent some rims. Put some big ass SUV tires on it. You know, yep. like the police rims, just. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's a fact. What do you think, though, from your opinion, what do you think is the most important thing going on in the city that we should be focused on? The most important thing that's going on in the city, it's a lot of disruption. They're trying to displace people, and that's why it's so much tension. Like, Atlanta's growing so fast, and the people who's not willing to accept the change of being forced out. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's driving out a whole lot of the, a whole lot of the things that make Atlanta Atlanta was, was the peace and the calm. Yeah. But now it's so much bullshit. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I don't know. It's I, like... think, I think right now, man, we, we are at a place where Atlanta is not going to be Atlanta anymore if we are not intentional about what we do right now. Right. Plain and simple. Like, I think right now, like, we got folks, you know, running around using crime, right? Just right. the overarching word, crime, to try to win votes, to scare people, to change the Yeah, that's the thing things. about it. They're trying to make Atlanta sound way worse than it actually is. Oh, it's not. That's the thing, though, right? So, right. like, first off, like, y'all know we got the weather. I ain't gonna name the blogs, but they out there that every time somebody see a car window get broken into or whatever, they put it up on the store. And they try to make thing. it seem like, yeah. But you that, that'll happen is, anyway. The numbers are lower than they have been for the last 10 years right now when it comes to auto theft, when it comes to car break-ins and all the things. And 60% of the car break-ins are auto theft is when people leave their keys in the car. 
Right. Most of this stuff is preventable. Most of the gun crime that's occurring right now is with stolen firearms that have been stolen out of vehicles. Right. Like, it's just some common sense things that we could do. Like, listen, I'm, I'm all for gun rights. I own several firearms, right? Yeah. But when you leave your vehicle, don't leave it in the armrest or under the seat. Lock it in the, in the trunk. Lock it in the uh, glove compartment. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just common sense things that we need to start taking responsibility for that, that will titrate, stymie off a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with. Right. Plain and simple. We want to make it safer, we got to do our part, too. Right. There's a lot of that going on, but you know. That's the city that, that, those are the things that happen in the city that make it the city. It's a major city, man. Exactly. It's a major city. But we also got to make sure that it's a city where we don't criminalize blackness. We don't criminalize That's the poverty. one, that's the, you put it perfectly. When you asked me what I thought it was, that's what I know it is. Criminalizing blackness. Yeah, man. Yeah. Because I don't think the people who, like you said, that that are in the position to make decisions understand exactly what Atlanta is right now. Since, yeah. And it's like, since the world shut down, it's like the importance of this place, because it never lost its freedom. You know what I'm saying? Like, even during the quarantine, mm -hmm. it still was a certain level of... We were doing our thing. Doing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but also, look, the governor of Georgia basically made Atlanta the playground for America for a long time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think there were some, there's some dangers in that as well. But, right. you know, Atlanta is supposed to be like a safe haven for blackness and black culture. Yeah, because this is a very given city. Correct. Yeah. Correct. We're supposed to be the city that's too busy to hate. Exactly. We're supposed to be. And we're supposed to be the city that has young, forward-thinking progressives. Right in the city council right. and in these positions to help us get our voices across. Yeah, I so think- So we don't lose the essence. At, at some point, <clears throat> even when folks get into office, I think we, we do a disservice when we stay in office until we die in office. Right. And I think too often that happens. The person I'm running against been in office since 1994. Right. We don't know them. It's folks watching, it's folks watching this show right now wasn't even born yet. Right. Since that person was- They born. definitely ain't gonna vote for him. Nah, but if they vote at all. So that's the part that we got to do better on, right. right? We can't complain we're not getting police reform, but don't vote. We right. can't complain that Atlanta's getting unaffordable and don't vote. Like, we right. can't complain about these things, um, but not put people in the position to, who actually want to do the work. Right. Well, you got to do your part, too. Yep. Because if you win this shit, I want you to wear the biggest hat. <laughs> that you can fucking... And some. And, and we're going to get a grill. We're going to holler at my boy uh, Grills by Scotty, and I already hollered at him. Scotty right? ATL. We're going to get a grill. We gonna, you know what I'm saying? So check I'm this out. Butter. I'm going to get a, a when shirt, is, right? When is the election? The election. So early voting starts October 12th. Early voting starts October 12th. That's less than 50 days away. Well, do me a favor, man. You got to come back before then. Let's do that. I need you to. I need you to get in here and I want you to come back and use this platform because it's a lot, we have a lot of followers that are catching on to the black market who are interested in making a change. And just knowing that it's somebody who can reach out and connect to some stuff like this, that's bringing some, you know, that's bringing hip hop, but it's still a, st a certain level of seriousness mm -hmm. that's approached about it. I think they're gonna be able to respect that. I love that. And you're a cool brother. Thank and you, I man. wish you much success. And these hats are fly as hell. Come on. And man, this is the black market, man. Come on, man. Shit! Hey! You in there, bro. Hey, man. Look, with your help, we gonna make this a definite. I know a few people. Thank you. We can make a few calls. We need them. <laughs> we need them. Much love, bro. Let's get it. That's it. Black market. We out of here. Yeah.